Bruchim Aboim. Thank you very much for coming. And again, we are in the middle of our Gematria series. Today we're going to deal with two numbers. The number uh, 25, uh, Chaf Hei, and the number 26, Chaf Vav. Again, in the uh, Hebrew uh, numbering system. Now, the number 25, Chaf Hei, is found in the number of letters in the first line of the Shema Yisrael. So if you count them, you'll see that from Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, there are 25 letters. Now also in the second verse, which we say quietly, Baruch Shem, Kaval Malchus Yolam Ved, whose name be blessed forever and ever, there are 24 letters, and we again can count the verse itself again, so we have 25 and 25. Now the aphod. The robe-like garment, which was one of the eight garments that the high priest wore, had two onyx stones, one on each of his shoulders. On each of these stones were engraved the names of six of the tribes of Israel, six on each shoulder. And each one of these stones consisted of 25 letters on each. Also, the 25th of El. And our Jewish calendar was the first day of creation, according to Rebbe Eleazar. Again, World Day. Happy birthday. And again, the birthday of the world. And the 25th word in the portion of Bereshit, uh, the first portion in the, in the Torah, is the word Or, which means light, which is alluding to the 25th day of Kislev, which is the first day of Hanukkah, the holiday of lights. Also, the 25th day of Kislev is also the day the Jewish nation in the desert finished the construction of the tabernacle again, which was a dear betaktonim, a dwelling place by God in this world, as a sign that he had forgiven them for making the golden calf. Now the 25th journey that the Jewish nation traveled in the desert, when Moshe Benu went over them, was the place they came to was Hashmona, which is an allusion to the Hashmonoim, the family of Kohanim that brought about the rebellion against the Greeks and again, which be brought about the story of Hanukkah and the menorah, the lights. The Levites began their training to serve in the temple at the age of 25, and they trained for five years till the age of 30. And then they served from the age of 30 until the age of 50. From this fact, the rabbis learn out that if someone has tried something for five years and is not successful, he should try something else. Now, the number 25, if we break it down to two and five is an allusion to the process of cleaning the menorah that was in the temple that had seven lights to it. When the children of Israel sinned with the golden calf, God forgave them and is approved to the fact of that. Again, as I mentioned before, he had them build the tabernacle, the mishkan. Now, one of the miracles in the tabernacle uh, that proved that God's presence resided in it was the fact that the Ner Maravi, the western lamp never burnt out, even though it received the same amount of oil as the other six. So when the priests would clean the lamps daily, the order was first five lamps were cleaned, and again, they were extinguished already, and then they were lit from the light, light of the Ner Maravi that was still, blow, that was still uh, lit, still shining, and then the Ner Maravi would be extinguished, and it and the lamp next to it would be cleaned and lit. Now, the word bracha, blessing, is found 25 times in the Torah. Also, the word shalom, peace, is also found 25 times in the Torah. The priestly blessings are introduced with the word ko, chaf hey, so shall you bless the children of Israel. And the last three blessings that we make uh, up, blessings that make up the priestly blessings, has the 25 letters in it. And again, ko, has an numerical value of 25, refers to the holy tongue, a sign of blessing. Again, a vessel which one can use to receive blessings with. And that's, again, that's what I found for the number 25. 26, chaf vav, has an numerical value again of 26, which is the most significant word with a gematria of 26, and that word is the four-letter name of God of mercy. Again, which we call the yud ke vav ke, we don't pronounce. It's called the ineffable four-letter name of God and is referred to as the tetragamaton. Have you ever seen it? What, what's the word does that come from? It's really a Latin word, which means four letters. It is also referred to as the shame havaya, the name of being. 
that is considered to be his definitive name. It relates to God as the eternal master of the universe, the one who is, who was, and who will be. Now, the source, he is the source of all that exists. This name is unlike the many other divine names of God, which refer to how man views or perceives God in the world through his divine attributes. Now, none of the names of God may be recited unnecessarily, nor may they be erased. The Torah explicitly warns against blaspheming or saying the name of God in vain in the third of the Ten Commandments. Now, the four-letter name of God of mercy is unique among all the other special names of God in that it is never pronounced as it is written, whether in prayer or in the reading of a Torah scroll. The only time that it was permissible to articulate this name, the Shema Meforish, was within the temple itself. It was recited by the high priest on Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the year, and when he would do so, he would do so ten times. It was also said by the Kohanim, the priests, when they blessed the people, but only in the temple, not in the provinces. All other times that we say this holy name of God, the Yudke Bavke of mercy, we substitute the name Adonai, which means my master, in its place. Colloquially, to avoid any misuse of this name, we substitute the non-sacred word Hashem for the UK Vavke, which literally means the name. Now, it's also interesting, the word Hashem is Moshe, if you uh, move the letters around. When writing the four-letter name of God of Mercy, we just use the letter He with the slash over the top. Now, the natural wor world seems to operate mechanically. It conceals God as its creator and mover. And so, too, the four-letter name of God is similarly hidden in this world. The way that we are able to see God in this world is basically in hindsight. As Abram Vino said at the Akedah, Viyar es ha-mokum me-rechok, that he saw the place from a distance, which also mokum is one of God's names, that he saw God in the, in the distance, which means that it, you may not see God it, with you in the present or even in the future, but in the past. If a person looks closely at his life, you'll see the hand of God everywhere. It's a beautiful poem where a person complains to God as he's walking down the sand. And he looks back and sees one set of prints. And he complains to God and said that you said you would walk with me every place I go. But there's only one set of prints. Where are you? And God says to the man, there's only one set of prints because I'm carrying you. And again, a person needs to know this and believe this. Now a cube alludes to the ineffable name of God. It has six sides, eight points, and 12 lines. Six, eight, and 12 is 26. Again, it's the name of God. The Torah describes man's formation, beginning with the 26th verse in the book of Bereshit, where it says, V'yomer Elohim, and God said, Nase Adam, let us make man b'tzalmenu kudmusenu, in our image and likeness. However, the fulfillment of man's purpose on earth is to reveal godliness, and that would have to wait 26 generations until the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai. The prayer that we call the Hallel HaGadol, the Great Hallel, which is Psalm 118 in the Book of Psalms, is recited in the Pesuke de Zimra, the verses of song every Shabbat. It has 26 verses, which all conclude with the words, Ki li olam chasto, for his kindness endures forever. These 26 statements parallel the 26 generations that existed in the world prior to God's giving the Torah to mankind. Now, there were 10 generations from Adam, first man, to Noah, and another 10 generations from, until the Avram Avinu, till Abraham. There are, were another six generations, with Moshe being the 26th generation from creation. This alludes to the 26 letters and the first words of the Torah that we teach a young boy after his upshearing, after he gets his first haircut at the age of three. Torah Tzivulanu Moshe, Morasha Kehilas Yaakov. That the Torah that Moshe commanded us is the heritage of the congregation of Yaakov. 
The Torah was given to us through Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses our teacher, who was the 26th generation of mankind. So as an aside, it's very interesting that we call our teachers today Rabbi so-and-so. Moshe, on the other hand, is called Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe our teacher, because all rabbis have their status by virtue of being a rabbi and then their name. Whereas Moshe, the greatness of being Moshe, made the term Rabbeinu, our teacher, great. And even though the word Torah has a has numerical value of 611, the name Moshe Rabbeinu has a numerical value of 613, which includes the fact that Moshe Rabbeinu taught us all of the Torah. Now, the preeminence of Moshe as the greatest prophet is alluded to in the 26-word blessing recited before we have the reading of the Haftorah. Now, the four-letter name of God of mercy alludes to God Almighty, <coughs> excuse me, who is completely above this world, which is alluded to by the two plus six of the 26. Two and six has numerical, is, a, is the number eight. Eight is a number that represents something above nature, much like a circumcision, which is performed on the eighth day of a baby boy's life. In addition... Out of the six days of creation, as we know, God took to create the world, it was only on two days, on Tuesday and on Friday, that God said it was good twice. On Tuesday, the word tov, good, was mentioned twice. And on Friday, the term, term tov me'od, very good, was stated. Now, the fifth of the Ten Commandments state, kabed et avicha v'et imecha, honor your father, and your mother. And the word kabed, honor, has a numerical value of 26, which is allusion to God, the third partner in the relationship between a husband and a wife. As we know that the man with the name, the word for man and woman, ish and isha, both have the word ish as their base, fire. And what stops the fire burning between them is God took his name called the yud and the he which he created the Yud, again, the upper world, as we mentioned before, and the Hay, this lower world, making the word Aish into Ish, by putting the Yud in between, the Aleph and the Shin, and the Hay at the end of the Aish for a woman is Isha. And again, this is how that third partner, God, becomes part of the relationship between a husband and a wife. Now, the word Kabi can also mean hard. It can also mean liver, same word. Liver has an unusual trait, in that the longer you cook it, the harder it gets. Where most meats, the more you cook it, the softer they get. The liver is the organ in the body that purifies the blood. Torah teaches us that hadam hu nefesh, that the blood is where the soul resides. So too, when we connect these translations to our service of God, the more fire, enthusiasm, ash that we put into our service of God, the stronger our connection of our godly soul has to God himself. Rabbi Akiva said and teaches us that prim the premier statement in the Torah is the ahafta l'rayacha kamocha that a person should love his neighbor as himself. In fact, the Arizal states that one, before one begins his morning prayers, he should verbally accept upon himself this concept. Parabimi kabbalai mitzvah sase shall be ahafta l'rayacha kamocha that I accept upon myself the Torah commandment to love my neighbor as myself. Now the word ahava, love, has a numerical value of 13. When two Jews love each other, 13 and 13, it gives us a numerical value of 26, and then they connect to this great name of God, of mercy. Now the Holy Temple was destroyed because of sinas chinam, baseless hatred. By accepting this concept, of Yahavta the Reacho Kamocha, of loving another Jew. We can exchange the hatred for sinas, for, for avas chinam, for baseless love. And with that, we can hopefully usher in the coming Mashiach Sikenu quickly and in our time. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed the lecture. And uh, hopefully next week we'll continue with number 27 in this Tumachia series. God bless and have a good Shabbos.